Hey y'all, this is my first real bike. The 2020 Giant Revolt 2. I've had it for a little over a year now and I've put 3,400 miles on it. Some of those miles were of course gravel riding, some were commuting, and a lot of them were riding up mountain roads like this one here in LA. So if you're in your 30s and you're looking for your first gravel bike or your first road bike, hoping that that will help you escape the fear that your youth is slowly slipping away, this is the video for you. This is the 2020 model. It's the Giant Revolt 2. It's not the advanced, just the regular Revolt. What that means is it has an aluminum frame instead of a carbon frame. The fork is carbon, so you get a little extra like compliance there. Additionally, the seat post is a D-shaped seat post, and that gives you a little compliance too. When I bought this bike, I didn't know what any of that stuff meant because I was brand new to all of this. If at any point any of this stuff is confusing to you, drop a question in the comments. I'll do my best to answer you, but also there'll probably be more knowledgeable people there who can answer some of your questions too. With that disclaimer, let's continue. So the group set on here is Shimano Sora, for the most part. The rear derailleur, the front derailleur, the levers, levers, I've been watching a lot of UK cycling stuff. Levers sounds weird to me now. That's all Shimano Sora. The crank set is FSA. Hydraulic brakes are actually made by Giant, and they go up into this weird little box thing on the front of the handlebars, and then to the lever, the levers. So the levers are actually mechanical, but this box converts it to hydraulic, so you get hydraulic brakes, which are really nice when you're going down descents. The wheels are aluminum, they're by Giant. The tires are also by Giant. These are tubeless. I have not replaced them. They're still the original tires, so 3,400 miles on the original tires, that's pretty great. I have replaced the sealant in them. Yeah, that's all the stock stuff, I think. Oh, and uh, yeah, of course, the handlebars are by Giant as well, and the stem. All proprietary, so it's really hard to kind of switch things out with Giant. The nice part of that is it's really affordable. The kind of frustrating part about it is if you want to switch things out after market, some things, like the handlebars or the stem, you're kind of locked into their own little ecosystem. On that note, let's talk about the things that I updated. Yesterday, I put on new handlebar tape. Big update. This is the cork. A cork and foam handlebar. This is my first ride on it. So far, so good. I also switched out the pedals, or rather put these pedals on. They're Favero Asioma pedals. They are power meter pedals. They use the Look Kio cleat. They work with my shoes, which are Physique Tempos. Speaking of Physique, I replaced the giant seat with this Physique seat. As you can see, it has a nice cutout so I can one day have children. And I have a Wahoo Element Bolt so that I can record my power data here where I also record my rides, I link it up with Strava, all my routes, all of that great stuff. I also have this little Garmin tail light, which is really important riding through the city, and a little saddlebag by Aura Case. With all that loaded up, this bike comes in at 10.8 kilos, which I think is like around 24 pounds, so it's definitely not a light bike. Uh, but it is sturdy. As I mentioned, this is the 2020 model. Their website says it's all sold out. Maybe you can dig one up somewhere at your local bike shop. I did look up the 2021 model, and it's pretty much exactly the same, except for three key differences. Got a new paint scheme. I think it looks really nice. It costs $300 more now. It's $1,300 instead of $1,000. And the third difference, they have gotten rid of this hydraulic disc brake converter thing. So you only have mechanical disc brakes. So you know, pros and cons there. Con, no more hydraulic disc brakes. Pro, you don't have this rat's nest of cables up front, which I'll talk about again here in just a second. But before I do that, do me a solid, hit the like button. And as a thank you, here's a picture of my adorable dog. So let's talk about my review. I have had this since May of 2020, and I have ridden it all over the place. Gravel trails here in California and in Utah, used it to commute from East LA down to the beach. That was like 40 miles round trip. I did not do that every day, but you know, about once a week. And I've used it to ride up and down mountain roads all over LA. So I feel like I've given it a pretty good run for its money. I'll just be upfront. I love this bike. It is amazing. It is my first real bike, my first drop bar bike. But before I start gushing on it, let's talk about the few things that I don't love about it. First up, it is pretty heavy. It is over 10 kilograms. I grew up riding mountain bikes. They were way more than 10 kilograms. They were all like chromoly steel when they were all rigid frames. That dates me. So 10 kilograms felt pretty light when I first got it, but there are a lot of people around here riding super light carbon bikes. And it is a little frustrating 
to be putting out 300 watts, going as hard as I can up a hill, sweat pouring down my face, and then I turn and I look and, and somebody's just like easily riding past me on their lightweight carbon bike. Definitely a meditation in patience and acceptance, and I'm working on it, but I just, I wish the bike was lighter so I could just zoom, zoom past them. It is what it is. Another thing that I find frustrating is this like rat's nest of all these cables up here. It's cool it's got the hydraulic brakes, but because of all this, I can't put a bar bag on it. And let's be honest, if your gravel bike doesn't have a bar bag, is it even a gravel bike? The last thing that I personally find a little bit frustrating, but I didn't at first, is the Shimano Sora group set. It has nine gears, unlike other group sets at the higher tier, the 105, Ultegra, Dura Ace. They all have 10 or 11 gears. Sometimes those two extra gears, either at the top end or the low end, would be helpful for going up a hill or cruising out. I do run out of gear pretty often on this bike. And then also, you're limited. You can't really upgrade like you could. If, if this had a 105 on it, it'd be a lot easier to upgrade. If you're looking into indoor trainers, the Wahoo Kicker comes with a cassette that works with those higher level group sets, but does not work with the Shimano Sora. I'd have to get a whole nother cassette to put on that to make it work with the bike. I think it's basically just because it's an entry level group set on an entry level bike. So that's something to keep in mind as well. But all that said, that's about all I have to complain about this bike. Let's talk about the things I love about it. This thing is easy. It's easy to take care of. It's easy to maintain. It's easy to ride. It's pretty comfortable. And yes, it is heavy, but because it's aluminum, I don't have to worry about it being banged up. My first couple weeks, I got a few like nicks and scratches on here. If I had had a carbon bike, I probably would have ruined the frame within the first 100 miles and then I would be devastated. So I am glad that I got this aluminum frame bike as my first like real bike. It's the first time I've ridden drop bars. I love these things. You know, this isn't unique to this bike, but you know, it's something I love about this bike. I can ride up top here. I can ride on the hoods. If I want to really cruise, I can be down on the drops. Riding drop bar for the last year, like I never want to go back to a flat bar. It's nice to have that versatility and be able to switch things up, especially on a long ride. And another thing I really love are the tubeless tires, especially at this price point. A lot of entry level gravel bikes and road bikes will say that the wheels are tubeless ready, which means the tires they put on are not tubeless. But if you want to buy tubeless tires and seal it and put it all together, then you can have tubeless tires. That was not the case with this giant revolt. The tires that came with it, they are tubeless tires. So they were already attached. They had the sealant in, they were good to go. And these tires have saved me. In 3,400 miles, I have never had a flat. I've had a lot of punctures. I've sprayed sealant all over the place, but never a flat. The way tubeless tires work, just in case you didn't know, because I didn't know at first, this tire is attached directly to the wheel. And then inside, there's a sealant, which is like this, this goo. And if you get a puncture, the goo will go to where the hole is, and then it will coagulate and fill the hole. It's really cool, you know, especially riding gravel when you don't have to worry about it. Again, I've never had to deal with a flat knock on wood in 3,400 miles. I don't have any wood here to knock on. These tires are pretty old and it's about time to replace them, uh, but they've been, they've been good to me. Thank you, tires. So for all those reasons and a lot more, I love this bike. But the thing I love most about this bike is that it's made me fall in love with riding again. As I mentioned, I rode mountain bikes in high school. I rode a Fixie in New York. I know I'm such a hipster, but I had a couple years where I didn't have a bike and I picked this up and I had forgotten how much I love riding. Have I outgrown it? I don't know, maybe. Uh, can I do everything I want on it? Yeah, I can ride gravel. I can ride on the road. I've actually learned that I really like road cycling more than gravel, which is surprising. And I'm really glad I got this bike because if I had gone for a gravel bike that was more mountain bikey or even just a mountain bike, I never would have learned that I love road biking. And on the flip side, if I would have got a road bike, I think I would have always had in the back of my mind, like, what is gravel riding like? Because, you know, it's the really cool thing that everybody's doing. To be honest, I probably ride road 95% of the time and gravel only 5% of the time. I'm thinking I might actually switch the tires out when I replace these with some, some road tires, some Schwalbs, Schwalbies or whatever, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what, what tires I should put on this. Can I do everything I want and more with this bike? Absolutely. Do I still want another bike? Absolutely. <laughs> but I think that's just like part of any hobby, right? The truth is though, when I ride this a couple times a week, I'm excited every single time. Even if I'm in a grumpy mood, 15, 20 minutes, an hour in, eventually there's a smile on my face because I'm riding this bike. 
So who is this bike for? Well, if you're looking for your first gravel bike or maybe even your first road bike, this is a great choice. Comfortable ride, good value for money, and it's just a lot of fun. That's my review of the Revolt 2. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and tell me what your first real bike was. I'm really curious to hear what y'all ride.